Okay, we're going to be doing a YouTube video on What is Saving Faith by Gordon Clark. It is easily the most important book of the 20th century. It deals with, because it deals with some of the most important topics, especially the doctrine of justification by faith alone, which was, which is the cornerstone of Western civilization. And more importantly, it is the cornerstone of our eternal souls, of, of the eternal souls of believers. Um, it corrects the errors of legalism, but it also corrects the errors of antinomianism, the idea that we can get saved by the law, performing the law. And it also uh, addresses and corrects uh, issues in epistemology, uh, the modernism and the postmodernism movement that has really all but destroyed Western civilization. So let's get right into it. Uh, I've got the Greek, the original Greek from the original manuscripts up here, pistio in the, in the verb form, and then, uh, which means to believe, the, the mental act of believing, and then pistis is the noun. Uh, now we're going to talk about there's two separate definitions of the word pistis, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and break out the scriptures. So here we got uh, some scriptures with pistuio, uh, pistio, uh, the verb, and uh, let's go ahead and underline the verb when we see it. And we've got uh, Martha's confession of faith in John eleven twenty seven. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. So uh, now here's the thing. Most people have the idea when we talk about faith that the only topic that we're talking about is something holy. We're talking, of course, right here, we're talking about believing words from Jesus himself, uh, believing the words from the Lord unto our salvation. And of course, that is probably all of our most beloved verses. But we don't want to too narrowly define this term. Uh, it's just like if you were if you loved eagles and you said well i only uh and you were you were going to define birds and you said well the only word that i will accept is the only the only type of bird that i accept are eagles i don't accept all the other birds i don't accept the turkeys and i don't accept the um, the ostriches that don't fly i only accept the eagles well you have too narrowly defined your term and so you don't want to too broadly define it either. You don't want to say, well, I, I believe that birds are all animals. No, they're not. They're only a certain specific type. So we don't want to too broadly define it, and we don't want to too narrowly define it. And so uh, let's just look at a few other scriptures where we can see for sure that the word pistio is not only used in these holy contexts where we're believing unto salvation. We can see right here in 2 Thessalonians 2.11, for this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. So here we have pistio, the same verb, the same Greek verb. Uh, they believe, okay. Uh, the same Greek verb being, being used here, but we're talking about believing lies now. So uh, we, we want to include all of the categories. And when you do any type of... Uh, um, uh, biblical study, you have to include all the scriptures first and then try to define the terms from that. You can't just pick one verse and say, well, I like that verse. I like eagles, and that's the only way I'm going to define it. Okay, so let's, keep, let's go on here. We've got um, another verse where there's uh, it, the, the verb is stated in the negative this time, but also in a nefarious uh, belief. The Pharisees, uh, they still did not believe that he had been blind. Here they are not believing in a, uh, a miracle that Jesus had performed. Okay, so then uh, take it up one more uh, level of um, confusion here. <laughs> uh, this is James 2.19. This is, he says, you believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. So, we can see that we have this verb pistillo, and of course it's a verb just like any other verb, and uh, we, you know, we don't want to get too pious about it, it's just like any other verb. It conjugates into first person, second person, third person, it conjugates into past tense, future tense, present tense, you know, past perfect, whatever. 
Um, here we have uh, the subject is a woman. We could have the subject being men. We can have the subject being demons. Uh, we can have uh, the believer, somebody believing in lies who is unregenerate, a fallen man. And we can believe in people who are regenerated believers. Uh, so we have uh, all the different types of gambits. We have all the different types of contexts uh, where this verb appears. So we don't want to get too narrow in our definition and say, oh, no, it's only in those occasions where, uh, where people are believing unto salvation. No, it has many different contexts, and especially the one to consider here is this one, where we have demons uh, believing truth. See, they're not believing a lie. See, here's, here's Martha believing truth. Here's, uh, uh, you know, unbelievers believing lies. But here we have a demon believing truth. Okay, much to be explained. Let's go ahead and get into, uh, we're, we're going to cover that in more detail. But we first of all got to go into the noun. Okay, so we've got, the noun is the word pistis. Now we shouldn't be thinking that there's a word faith and that there's a word believing or belief, uh, those are the same word. It's the same Greek word. There isn't, in English, we've got those two different words, and a lot of people think that they have such a, I've, I've, I've seen uh, YouTube articles, and what's the difference between uh, faith and belief? It's like, it's the same, it's being translated from the same Greek word. There's no difference between them. It's just the choice of the translator to choose to, to use that word instead of the other one. It's the same exact word. There's not two words in the Greek for it. So, um, so we've got the word pistis, which is the noun. And here's, the, here's one of the most important things that Gordon Clark talks about, is that there is a distinction. There's two different definitions of the noun pistis. Uh, and if you mix those two up, you're going to be completely confused. And this is, this is the cause, this is the, um, the favorite tool of many sophists. Many, you know, the, all they do, all their purpose is to try to obfuscate and trick people. And, cover, and confuse people so that they can't see the truth. And uh, if, you, if you do not distinguish between the objective definition and the subjective definition, you will certainly fall prey to their trickery. And so this is what, the age that we're dealing in is a, an age where the sophists have really confused us on this issue. And once we get this down packed, it's going to clear up everything. It's going to clear up a whole lot of church di divisions and a whole lot of justification by faith alone controversies. So we've got... Um, the objective definition and the subjective definition. So what is the difference between those two? And I'm, the easiest way to see it is with the grammar. And I'm just going to make a simple sentence. And I'm going to make the sentences. It's non-piased. It's not holier, holy, dealing with holy things. It's just a simple run-of-the-mill where we're talking about it being emotionally detached so it does not affect your self-interest. And it's just generic, what, what Gordon Clark talks about, generic faith. It's not, it's not, uh, we're not talking specifically about saving faith. So that's, and he says, saving faith is one specific species of faith. So we have to talk about the broader definition before we can talk about that specific application of the definition of the word. Okay, so I'm just going to put a very simple sentence up here. As we said, uh, detached, non-piased, and uh, simple. I believe that... Vinegar cures warts. Okay, so very simple sentence. What do we got here? Of course, we've got uh, the verb right here. And then we've got this subordinate clause, that vinegar cures warts. Okay, so this right here is the number one, is the first definition, the objective. Think about this as the objective belief. So my belief is vinegar cures worse. That's my belief. So that's the objective definition. It's always going to be in the form of a statement, of a declarative statement. Um, the easiest way to say what a, a, what a declarative statement is, it's anything that you would see on a true or false exam. So anytime that you see a true or false question, it's, that's going to be something that's asserting truth. See, we don't really know whether vinegar cures warts or not. I suppose there could be debates about it. Um, 
but it, whether it's true or not isn't the issue. The issue is that you're believing. See, people believe, we have in the scriptures, we saw people believing lies. So the object of belief, the objective belief here is, is going to be in the form of a statement asserting truth. Now, um, think about this. If you eat a hamburger, the object of you are eating is the hamburger. That's because your stomach eats hamburgers. Your mind doesn't eat hamburgers. Your mind thinks thoughts. Your, your heart believes beliefs, statements that are asserted as truth. You, so, so the object of belief is in, in the form of a statement. And so this is the first, this is the first part is that the objective belief is a declarative statement. Okay, now, uh, it's, it's, it's the content of your thought. It's, or we could say, it's the creed, it's the objective truth, uh, it's the proposition, it's the uh, a statement, it's, you know, that, that, that you believe. Okay, so, and, and it's, it's objective. In other words, it, it can be shared by many other, many minds. It's, it's, it's a sentence in a book. Uh, okay, so, uh, now, okay. So now, um, the subjective definition is really, uh, it is, is merely the verb form being turned, nominalized into a noun. So if I said, um, uh, uh, birds fly, that's a verb, but flight of the, of the Valkyrie, you know, flight now is a noun. It's, it's a noun, uh, nominalized verb turned into a noun. Um, you could also it could also be in the gerund form. Flying is fun or whatever. So you so it could be either the 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 gerund form or it can be in the nominalized verb form. So the second part, the second one is just the nominalized verb. So this is so the objective one is the is the creed that you believe, and then the subjective is the mental act. You know, the word act is a noun, even though you would think, well, uh, a verb is a, a, an action. You know, well, the word action is a noun itself. So uh, at any rate, we're nominalizing the verb and we are turning it into a noun. And so this is, you know, and, I, and again, we don't want to think that this is something that is peculiar to the word faith so that we get so pious that we can't think. Uh, you know, this can be done with any you can, you can nominalize any verb. You know, you could say, um, I like to walk. And you come back from it and somebody says, hey, was that a good walk? Yeah, it was a good walk. That's a noun. Um, so you could do um, dance. Uh, you know, uh, Clara danced. Okay, well, that was a beautiful dance. Now, now you've got it in noun form. So, uh, so you can nominalize any verb, literally any verb in the English language. So... Um, one way I think that is a good thing to do, and this is what I'm going to do throughout the, uh, throughout the video, is to use these in different ways, use these different words, even though it's not 100% of the time, but I think it just helps. If we're talking about the objective beliefs, we can say, let me write it in green here, so you guys know there's a distinction. So we can say, the, it's always usually, almost always used with an article in front of it. The beliefs. Okay. And then when we're talking about the subjective definition, I'm going to say, believing. This act of believing, this mental act. Believing. So we've got the beliefs. Now, there are a couple other reasons why this helps to distinguish it. A, a gerund is never plural. Um, and, and not only that, people don't, we're not Borgs, you know, from Star Trek where we have the, the, the hive mind where we share thoughts with each other. Everybody individually, you know, uh, the scriptures say in uh, 1 Corinthians 2.11 that, um, you know, that only the, the man inside of his own heart, he, anyway, each person only knows their own thoughts. We can't, God can read our minds, but we don't read other people's minds. We only, we can only know our own thoughts in the way that we can know what somebody else is thinking is, you know, the words that they say. And so, uh, or, or that you can see their actions. But, um, but believing is never done in the plural. We don't have, we don't all, you know, join together in a, in a, a hive mind and believe together. So I think that's the, the believing in, 
is always in the singular, and so that helps to distinguish it from the beliefs, uh, which almost invariably, objective beliefs, and we're going to see this shortly, are going to have necessary logical implications off of them, and they're going to be part of a system, and then they're never going to be seen alone. And so that's the reason why when we talk about uh, the objective beliefs, it's almost invariably that you're going to see them among other beliefs that are part of the same system. And so we'll go ahead and, and break here, go to the second video, and that's just a, a, a basis for understanding the difference between the two different types of, of faith, of, of the noun faith. Uh, it's the objective and the subjective. We'll see you soon.